Over his two decade long career, Adam22 has built one of the largest YouTube networks, DMX brand, and has probably interviewed your favorite rapper. There was a time when he was loved, but today, most hate him. The fans call him a culture vulture, allegations by multiple women have surfaced, and almost everyone with him in the beginning has disappeared. But how did it get to this point? Where did it all start? And who is Adam22, the man behind No Jumper? I'm Rashad Fashir, and this is the rise and fall of Adam22 and No Jumper. November 20. Alright, yo, so. Before we continue into this, uh, we're getting into Adam 22, right? Some of the stuff that's going on with him. And I'm going to just give you my conspiracy straight up, right? Like, I'm not waiting to the end. For this, I think he's going down bad, right? With the whole allegations coming out. Um, the people leaving him, like AD, House Phone. I remember when his channel just started getting popping and i was and i started watching him i think it was in early days of college or right before college and um house phone was like always there yo well he was there for a long time and then ad came on and them dudes was funny you know what i mean it was cool but then things started to like get weird and you could see little subtle things in like how adam would move and then i kind of just stopped watching him because it was just like not vibing with me no more you know what i mean and then um you start to see a lot of people saying yo this is the downfall of adam adam exposed this that and the third more things started coming out and then boom all of a sudden um well not all of a sudden but wedding and then right after wedding yo i'm letting my wife uh hit a black guy we're filming it we're dropping it everybody's talking about them he's absolutely milking it bro I, i'm just seeing this guy just post almost every day lana the plug bbc oh adam this and he's post reposting like controversial things about himself and it's just like is this really for content is this really where morality has gone and um I think he's doing that just to like as a distraction and simply for money. So we're gonna get into a list of videos. Um while I do my little baby drawing, I'm trying to wrap it up, you know what I mean? And yeah. So stay tuned and let's see what happens with all these videos and you tell me what you think after we go through all this content. 24th, 1983, Nashua, small town in New Hampshire located near Boston. A librarian and a city council member would have their first boy, Adam John Grand Mason. He was an internet kid who would spend all his time on message boards and other corners of the internet with all sorts of hobbies. He was the most obsessive video game player ever and would even write video game reviews on his mom's computer at only nine years old. As a kid, Adam would listen to all types of music. When he was in fourth grade, he discovered rock music like Green Day. By the time he was in sixth grade, he was listening to Smashing Pumpkins and Nirvana. He even listened to hardcore music such as Strife, Earth Crisis, and Minor Threat. But make no mistake, as a kid, Adam got really obsessed with rap. Even back then, Adam was listening to underground rap, Black Star, and Jedi Mind Tricks. At the time, it was very odd for a kid to listen to both rock music and rap, but Adam was passionate about both. But neither video games or music were Adam's first love. BMX was. Just him and his friends riding around town doing graffiti and having fun. When Adam was a teenager, everyone in his neighborhood had a BMX bike. But as kids got older and got cars, their passion for BMX faded. Adams grew stronger than ever. However, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for a young Adam. In fact, these hobbies were his escape. Adam's family life was brutal, borderline abusive, and said he felt like he was going to war physically Yo, with his I father every day. Him, I remember like sitting BMX. there crying as like an eight year old thinking about I should call the cops. Like feeling like, man, like there's something really wrong with like how I'm being treated here. When he was little, he had behavioral problems. When he was 16, he really got into trouble and after getting arrested a couple times for fighting, his parents would be told by the court to put him in therapy. Diagnosis what? he received for being so messed up was due to his turbulent house life, he never felt safe. The therapist said made him feel like he was always in danger. This only pushed Adam further into BMX. It dawned on him this may be his only way to become independent of his parents. But abuse wasn't the only thing that plagued Adam's childhood. When Adam was in 6th grade, his father went to jail for a white collar crime. His dad was friends with Bill Clinton and his uncle was one of the former president's first supporters. Adam's what? dad abused his position and went to jail for a year. I didn't he was pardoned by Clinton years later, but at the time, it really messed up Adam's family life. 
All of a sudden, Adam's mom became a single parent and had to deal with him constantly getting in trouble at school. It was really tough on her. I see my mom like crying every night because she was having such a hard time keeping the family together. A year later, his dad got out of jail super stressed and having to deal with Adam's behavior just made it worse. In high school, Adam hung out with BMX kids. He was even painting and doing a lot of art at that age, but he struggled in school going to summer school every year, and barely graduated. Adam's parents grew up poor, and to them, education was the only vehicle towards social mobility because everything they had was due to education. So Adam had to go to college too. In his first year of college, he excelled, getting straight A's. But in his second year, things took a turn for the worse. After going on BMX trips, he began getting straight D's. And in that same year, he got introduced to fraud and other illicit means of making money. His heart just wasn't in the traditional school system, and he was left with a tough decision. Make his parents proud or drop out. He knew how much it meant to them, but at the end of his second year, Adam told his mom he was leaving college to move to New York. I'm like, yo, I'm out. I'm moving to New York. And I remember she was just crushed because she just thought I was just blowing it so bad. And this is when Adam's journey began. Once Adam was in New York, he was on his own. He knew he had to make it somehow. But for the time being, he was making ends meet and then some with fraud. His love for BMX remained, but it never crossed his mind that he could make money off what he loved. So to him, there was only one way to survive. Fraud and selling candy. <clears throat> but he did do one thing that would change the trajectory of his life. He started a BMX blog, The Come Up. But after six months in New York, Adam just couldn't take it anymore. He had to do something legitimate for his own sake. At the same time, a young Adam just didn't have what it took. He was fat, had no real skills yet, and was lazy like many young men. But his mother and sister uh -uh. constantly doubting him would set a fire in his stomach. One day, he got paid 1.5k for an advertising gig on his BMX blog. That paid gig was the spark that lit the fire inside of him. Adam went all in on his BMX site. Six months later, he made a bunch of money and lost 60 pounds. For a short time, Adam was even playing online poker and making decent cash, but quit to focus on his blog. He was serious about it. He'd go on to start a BMX brand on some shit, a brand Adam started after thinking it would be cool to create a bike brand that centered around having the bike seat filled with funny grass. As a brand owner, Adam used to live with a bunch of young BMX kids in a BMX house, sponsor them, buy them food, give them a place to stay, and grow their social media presence. In return, they'd promote his brand. 2013, Adam opened a retail store in LA next to Skid Row. It would become a place for the BMX community with BMX stuff and awesome shit merch. 2015, it became home to Adam's I passion project, this part underground rap podcast, before aka it became No, no Jumper. Jumper. In the beginning, Adam employed a bunch of BMX it. guys, but in the back of the store, he'd start one of the most influential rap podcasts of all time. Unironically. I like this music. Originally, No Jumper wasn't intended to be a what podcast. Adam and a guy named George were going to start a high quality hip hop blog where they posted writing about rap. The name No Jumper came from a Gucci main lyric, found it cool, and most importantly, could be put on a shirt. Adam wasn't really writing much. George was taking care of that. Adam was financing it. It was going all right. George even showed ASAP Yams the blog and Yams tweeted about it, shouting No Jumper out. Unfortunately, George wasn't able to keep up with the blog and it ended. Till Adam did a podcast one day. It all started when one of Adam's friends put him onto Bones, a popular underground rapper. Through a mutual friend, Bones, Chris Travis, and Xavier Wolf, two more underground rappers came to Adam's store and started hanging out. Xavier hung out there quite often, and they just became close friends. One day, Adam decided to interview Xavier, but it's not on No Jumper, it was on On Some Shit's channel since No Jumper didn't even really exist, at least in the podcast form. Adam had some BMX podcasts before, but when he interviewed Xavier, the video got way more views than the BMX channel. He quickly realized the potential of underground rap interviews. He understood it was an emerging market and seized the opportunity. At the time, podcasts were mostly audio only, and Adam was somewhat of a visionary by putting his podcast on YouTube. He realized YouTube was a powerful tool, and he could segue away from BMX, where he had nothing else to prove in. But despite the momentum Adam built, he'd hit rock bottom emotionally after getting dumped and replaced by a girl he genuinely liked. They were together for months, but after Adam left for a one month work trip, she had a new man. Watching her dump him like that messed him up in the head. He got severely depressed, lying in bed all day, and was in a really bad state. The Adam grinding on his blog every day wasn't to be found anymore, but that period of aimlessness forged him into the person he would become. He decided that he would stop at nothing till he achieved his goal and used his pain to fuel him. From there, Adam began to finesse as many interviews as he could through mutual friends and fans. I just started like connecting yeah. all these little dots of like, oh, like I could get him, I could get him. Puya, a popular rapper from Florida, Ian Connor, Lil Yachty. Pretty soon, No Jumper became the staple for rap fans trying to find talented rappers before mm -hmm. they blew up or just mm -hmm. up-and-coming creatives in the culture. These this interviews were cool, cool, but it was really the consistency of the quality and rarity of the people No Jumper would interview that really made it what it was. Cemented him as the underground rap guy. And then he got Name X an underground rapper X from that time period. X. Adam interviewed them, and even knew them. He went on a tear of interviews that, that really X established No Jumper's core like fan base and what now. it stood for at the time. At this early stage of No Jumper, Adam was really fulfilled. 
He reached the point that the 20 year old him this was right really so badly. He felt hands, like he had accomplished so what he set out to do, but he still had a long way to go. His eyes were set on the biggest canvas. project he'd ever work on a media network. Adam's first big break came with the XXX Tentacion interview. Not when it dropped, but after X died. After doing hundreds of podcasts, Adam's hard work paid off. The interview is X's most personal and sits at 21 million views. Adam still regrets cutting it short, not realizing who X would become. X's relationship with Adam was quite deep. X really looked up to Adam, and Adam was even X's manager while he was in jail for a short period. Not by choice, X was just telling everyone, Adam22, that's my manager. In addition to X, Adam really supported a lot of SoundCloud rappers at the time. Lil Peep, Duop Kane, he went on tour with Lil Pump, was friends with Lil Xan, Lil Yachty, the list goes on. And these are just people that he had genuine relationships with. The interviews Adam was doing were getting a lot of views and No Jumper was growing fast. In 2016, the show would expand. No Jumper launched its first weekly podcast with the crew. 2017, the store relocated to Melrose, a much nicer area. But as things were starting to go well, Adam's past would catch up to him. In 2018, Atlantic Records launched a label imprint with No Jumper. Adam would get involved in the music industry for the first time. Once again, he was successful. He put out a take a single that garnered 100 million streams on Spotify alone. Things were looking good. But later that year, Adam was accused of SA by two different women. The next year, his contract wasn't renewed. Atlantic Records had dropped Adam due to the controversy. They had like journalists trying to get them to cut me off. It just ended up being more trouble than it was worth. But that was a minor setback, if one at all. No Jumper was fine, growing and changing rapidly. There were viral clips coming out every month. Boom Gang passed out on a stream. Fuzzy 2 went on a manic tirade. Oh, I remember Creepy that. Red poured water on Adam's head. Boom Adam gang. was the victim of an attempted robbery while live streaming. These clips were raking in millions of views, and No I Jumper was that. thriving. It was around 2020 when No Jumper's content started to change, and it kind of hit me. It no longer really featured underground rap or even mainstream rap. It had all types of content, ranging from drama to adult shows. This type of content started to alienate No Jumper's original core fan base, mm -hmm. including me. 2020, Adam realized he would need other shows to continue No Jumper's growth, and there was only one path he could take. Adam had strategically chosen No Jumper instead of the Adam 22 show because if it was a network, Adam could host other shows and styles of content without him. In the following years, that's exactly what No Jumper evolved into. Pretty soon, the channel had tons of live shows featuring all sorts of entertaining hosts. Sharp, a pimp, Housephone, a longtime member of No Jumper's crew, AD, a crip, LA native T-Rel, and many more. No Jumper's numbers would skyrocket. But what started off as a smart business decision, an obvious next step, would cause a lot of issues, the majority of which stem from Adam's allegations as personality. To really understand what's happening with No Jumper right now, we have to go back to when Adam was young. Most of Adam's allegations are surrounding his relationships with women, and just like everything in his life, it's heavily tied to BMX. Adam was always hanging out with older BMX dudes, and they really messed up his perception of what a normal relationship looks like. Due to their adulterous behavior, they showed him that marriage didn't mean anything. Over the years, there have been multiple tweets he's made about women, which can be determined as jokes, depending on what you think. There was a certain blog post where Adam himself had written about a relationship he had with the girl he met when he was 23 and she was sick. He talks about meeting her on the internet and then even admits what he did may not have been legal, which is the most- Yo, cuz, why you cut that out? <laughs> She was underage. <laughs> Look, oh, he put the age. The age is there, but he doesn't say it. He talks about meeting her on the internet and then even admits what he did may not have been legal, which is the most detail I'm willing to go because this is YouTube. It was largely ignored and pushed under the rug by fans of No Jumper, including myself, admittedly, until recently, when Adam had a figure named Perd Buster on a show and ironically got busted on his own show. I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation with me. The one where you was messed with the 16 year old girl? Adam was infuriated that Perv Busters got on his own platform and tried to expose him. And he went on to defend himself after quickly shutting down the live stream. The article says I'm going I was on. 19 when I met her. She was 19 when you met her? Yeah. The you... article says it. But to the public and users on Twitter, the proof was I in the pudding, not know and that. the accusations were enough for them. The next week was pretty chaotic for No Jumper. Following these dire accusations, three co hosts of Adam's would leave the show. They all agreed Adam was a savvy businessman, an okay boss. But most importantly to them, a bad friend. One of the reasons Adam stopped doing illegal activities was there was a lack of control. And that seemed to be his downfall recently. He hasn't been able to admit when he's been wrong, and he hasn't been that solid guy that his employees thought he was. Housephone, who once thought of Adam as his big brother, quit as well. Even Lil Pump, who Adam went on tour with in 2016, called Adam a <laughs> from a hot tub and even challenged Adam to find the ring. While they were on tour, Pump was a minor, and Adam even admitted to being under the influence of Tic Tacs while driving through state lines. But what he did there wasn't evil. 
Furthermore, he was accused of providing substances to the members of the tour. Adam would even record videos of Lil Pump that, looking back, he shouldn't have. So that brings us to today, where Adam is hated by the community who once loved him and the larger public. Adam's a culture vulture. Adam's a... The list goes on. He's engaged to Lennon the Plug, a father, a multi-millionaire, and No Jumper has close to 5 million subscribers. What's in store for No Jumper and Adam22? No matter your opinion on him, the future is going to hold a lot of success. Because if you learned anything from this video, No Jumper and Adam22 were decades in the making and won't come down so easily. From his first blog to come up to the multi-million network he owns today. So should he be forgiven for what he did? I'll leave that up for you to decide. Part 2 of this video is on my commentary channel where I speak about the allegations more in depth. How I all right, so check it. First, let me just uh, do a little erasing right here. All right, and uh, down here. That's not accurate. All right. Uh-huh. And uh, Fix up there, there. That's the problem. Okay, that was the problem. This angle, a little sharper than that. Damn. So it should be something like that. Mm-hmm. And then let me just take out all of that. All right. And now this will come. Hold on. Right. So let me just, uh, that's what we're working on. So we see the quick rundown about the rise and fall of Adam 22, right? But like he said, some allegations just came up and um, a bunch of people started leaving. This is not the video that I originally thought it was because I saw another breakdown about this that was more in depth with the people leaving. But what you gotta see is it's what I think, you know, like, I'm, I think he's using his own wife as a cover up, bro. You know what I mean? As a distraction. So what is going on with y'all? I gotta get to the act. temperature. What y'all been? You know, act kind of funny. <laughs> so let's get into act and let's see what he got to say about this while we continue this little baby drawing. You see that I'm about to get into its hair. Found something I need to fix. So. Yeah. 